Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fader, I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with a weekly astrology forecast or message for the 6th till the 13th of January 2018. I know that a lot of you in Europe, in Israel, in the Middle East and in the States are chilling them bums off. I know that there's extreme cold weather in most places and if any of you joined uh, our OPA Live session that talked about Jupiter in Scorpio, I think it was a month and a half ago, I was talking about extremely cold weather. We've been experiencing record cold weather also in the last time and the time before that when Jupiter was in Scorpio. So I think it was 2006 and 94. Look it up, it's interesting. And now we're experiencing it again. So, let's talk about this week a little. What do we have in the Celestial Dome this week? We have Venus in Kazemi. We have a very energetic week that pushes us forward, that wants us to accomplish our feats and goals. And we have a conjunction between Saturn and Mercury that puts big brakes on that all, on our navigation through life. So we have a contradictory effect. On the one hand, a need to go forward faster. On the other hand, somebody's pushing the brakes. And we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> and of course, Venus in Kazemi. Venus in the heart of the Sun, a conjunction of Venus, Pluto, and the Sun. So let's begin saying that between the 6th and the 9th, Venus is already considered in the heart of the Sun. This is a time that her attributes are heightened and if you want to make a visualization or any kind of ceremony I would advise that you do it on the 8th or on the 9th when that conjunction is exact and you can plan or visualize how you would like all the Venusian aspects in your life to feel and look like in the near future. Venus is about satisfaction, all kinds of satisfaction. Our satisfaction primarily from who we are and from what we are, from our bodies, our self-esteem, from what we have, our possessions, and the people we are involved with, our relationships and our love, and of course the way we treat our bodies regarding food, drink, pampering ourselves in any way, and of course sensuality and sex. So all of these are Venusian aspects. But primarily Venus connects to the amount of satisfaction we have from our life. And when Venus is conjunct the Sun and Pluto, this is a great time for transformation. So this could mean a time for transformation in our relationships. It can mean a time for uh, transformation in the way we provide income or satisfaction or the way we regard our bodies and our self-esteem. But this could also prove a time for transmutation regarding everything that concerns the people we are with and involved with in our lives. So we need to really be aware of our relationships during this week and the next. Also because Pluto is the great um, revealer of everything that was hidden and tucked away in the closet, all the skeletons coming out, and just, you know, all the dirt that was tucked away underneath the rug. And Pluto examines it and says, I think there's a bump underneath this rug and I want to expose it. And by exposing it, so things can come out to the open this week. And if there is an emotional theme or any other thing that's been lurking underneath the surface, you would be feeling or somebody would be feeling the need to excavate that skeleton and put it on display. And we can become much more dramatic, we can become much more obsessive about things, we can become much more intense and total. And that could be too much for people around us. Or people can become too total and intense and that could be too much for us. So just pay attention to that energy. 
utilize it for your own good, but remember that it can create havoc in our lives as well if we're not in control of it. So, <clears throat> the 6th is also a very energetic day with the Moon sextile Mars and Jupiter and later on trying Pluto. Even though it is a Saturday and it is in the weekend, it's a day that we could enjoy a lot of energy, physical activity and transmutation and change with that trying to Pluto, we can actually overcome things. It's in the noon time, Eastern Standard Time, it's evening time, Central European time. On the 7th, we have an exact conjunction between Jupiter and Mars that we've been feeling all through these two weeks. It's a very energetic day. Again, it's a day that we could be extra impulsive or uh, a little bit too male, even if we are female, too male with our reactions to the world. So that means we, we have to be careful not to be too aggressive or even too assertive for that matter and and not um, too carnal, you know, um, not too sexual as well because this is a very sexual week. It's a great week, you know, to have beautiful love and sex, but we have to be careful not to be too carnal ourselves. And that conjunction between Jupiter and Mars is not all bad. We could be much more entrepreneurs on uh, this week in general and on that day especially. We could be much more forward oriented and action oriented and very decisive with our actions. We can take things forward. But in the evening time, Central European time and noon time onwards, uh, let's say morning, noon, uh, Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to square Saturn. That means that we could be extra sensitive. That means that we could be insecure. That means we can be judged or judge others too harshly or even ourselves. Just be mindful of that. On the 8th, Venus sextile Jupiter. Great day to enjoy the company of people, food, drink, aesthetics, love, sex. And Mars is sextile Pluto. So if you'll do one of these things that I suggested, I think it would be interesting. Uh, it can really be not only enjoyable, but also deep and meaningful. And as I said, Venus is in exact Kazemi in the heart of the sun on that day. On the 9th, Venus reaches our star point and moves away. You know, I don't know if you know, but Venus and planet Earth in their orbit around each other, they draw in the sky, in, the, in space, a five-pointed star, a pentagram, which is called the Venus star. And when Venus reaches a critical point from which it becomes a morning star to an evening star, it cuts the corner. It reaches the star point of one of that five star points that she paints with Earth as a pentagram in space. And she reaches that star point and she starts, we, we, we used to see her before the sun rises as a morning star, and now she's passing to be an evening star. And she's going to rise after the sun has set. And from the 19th onward, we will be able to see her visible in the sky as an evening star. Um, it's a time which Venus is heightened. It's a time when Venus is powerful and Venusian aspects can play a bigger part in our life for better or for worse. That's why I said that, there's, that this is a time for great changes sometimes in relationships or in our jobs, the way we provide income. And add to that fact that by the end of this week, Venus is going to square Uranus which is the great changer of things, the great innovator of things, and is also called the divorce planet. So when it squares Venus, depends how it affects your chart, of course, your personal chart, but when it squares Venus, this is a time that people break up from jobs or relationships, and people that have been single or jobless can find a job or a mate. Changes happen in those Venusian realms. If I was very unhappy with the way I was regarding my body, things can change from the better. 
or if I was very happy with myself, things can change for the worse. All Venusian aspects are apt to fluctuation. So, um, on the 10th, we have a very energetic day again with the Sun sextile Mars. It's a day to take things forward in your job environments. It's a great day for a lot of physical activity. It's a good day again for sensual, sexual activity. And we could be a little uh, more uptight or angry on that day. You know, a lot of sexual energy, a lot of Marsh Martian energy can make us, um, you know, I had a client talking to me over the last week saying, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm oversexed on the one hand and I'm really mad on the other. Like, like, I feel like I'm agitated. And when that penned up energy is accumulated, that's what we feel. We either feel over-sexualized or just too intense and angry. So physical activity is very good during this week and just l blowing that steam out or just doing physical work as well either training or physical work. On the 11th, Mercury is going to enter Capricorn and it conjuncts Saturn on the 13th. So we have Mercury, the planet of navigation, thought, information, suddenly decreasing in speed, so to speak. It's still slow, it's picking up speed because it was in a retrograde and now it's picking up speed, but Metaphorically speaking, when it conjuncts Saturn and goes into Capricorn, it's like this heaviness comes upon it. And this cloud that puts a test on Mercury, on the decisions we make, on the way we navigate our life, on our thoughts, our words, the way we interact with other people, and puts a very big test on all of these subjects and says, listen, is this feasible? Does this stand up to the laws of reality? And in many cases, after feeling that we want, you know, on the one hand, to push things forward, we'll be receiving a break. Somebody would be saying, halt. This is not up to the standards of reality. This is not feasible yet. This is not mature enough yet. This has not ripened. So in subjects and places that we have not ripened, yet we won't be able to push these things forward or oh, that would be a dance between a push forward and a setback a push forward and a setback but that could bring great maturation as well that would prove useful for us that could actually show us what's real and what's not so that's not all bad on the 12th we have moon conjunct jupiter mars again very energetic Excuse me, again, very, you know, me and my family, we try to have, uh, to get sick according to, to, to the season and the temperature. And since we're experiencing record colds, me, my wife and the kid have the flu. So I hope you like my little lower sexy voice. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah, you know, but hopefully it's going to get better. Hopefully it's going to get better pretty soon. So I'm sorry if I'm a bit congested. So the 12th is a very energetic day and the 12th is a wonderful day to enjoy yourself with a company of people, food, drink, aesthetics. Again, because the moon is conjunct Jupiter and conjunct Mars. And just be careful not to be too extravagant, not to seem to people like you think you're omnipotent or too proud. And be sensitive. Be sensitive to the will and needs of others. So a little precaution and a little uh, uh, um, mental effort and consideration and tolerance and, you know, putting the flames a little bit on a lower key would prove very useful on the 12th because the energies are very high. And from the 12, 
noon onwards, we can feel that conjunction between Mercury and Saturn. We can feel it a lot before, but it gets more intense on the 12th, and it's exact on the 13th, and then it would dissipate. And as I said, this is a time that we can receive halts and breaks that show us that the way we wanted to move forward in life is not ripened enough just yet. It's also the 13th, the moon is squaring Neptune and Venus is squaring Uranus. It's a sensitive day, it's a day that we can be hurt much more easily and we can feel insecure and we can feel a little lost and discombobulated. Just know that it's a sensitive day, treat it as, as such and you'll be just fine. You'll be just fine and because once we know these energies are in the sky we can readjust our reaction to life accordingly and this is what these messages are exactly good for they help us move away and evade all kinds of pitfalls in our life i want to thank you for listening i want to thank you for watching this for commenting for um, saying what you think about the video and liking them and even sharing them. I want to let you know that I've been blocked from Facebook over the last two weeks and Facebook has done this, that repeatedly every time I try to share these videos in astrological groups because Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like the fact that I'm using his platform for free. So if I don't pay them something like uh, $400, $500 a month, you won't be able to watch me in the videos. The only reason you'll be, you are watching this video right now is because I paid Mark Zuckerberg for this video so you can watch it. I cannot upload it or even uh, uh, disseminate it for free. And that's why every comment and every like and every share by you is so helpful for me and I thank you for it and of course for private consultations and an advanced group or a beginners group in evolutionary astrology contact me this is Boaz Fyler wishing you all a very happy 2018 again and a great week ahead take care bless you bye bye